Can you sue your government into action on climate change? Yes, you can. And you have good chances to be successful. An increasing number of people and organisations are doing exactly that. But what will the consequences be? Let's have a look. A few months ago, 18 California school children sued the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA for short, for allegedly violating their constitutional rights. The children claimed that the EPA failed to protect them from harm caused by climate change. Heat waves, wildfires, droughts and floods, they say, have had severe negative effects on their lives. The decision is pending. That people sue over environmental problems caused by others is of course nothing new. The first case on record goes back to the 17th century when an Englishman sued because his neighbor's pigsty was supposedly depriving him of wholesome air. The defendant made a case for the utility of hogs but the court decided in favor of the plaintiff. Carbon dioxide is the new pig smell basically and people have sued over it for more than two decades. In 2002 the American charity organization Friends of Earth sued several financial institutions, among others the Export-Import Bank of America, over financing fossil fuel projects. They claimed that the institutions failed to evaluate the damage that these projects would do to the environment as U.S. law would have required. The judge ruled in favor of the plaintiffs and U.S. institutions are now required to consider damages incurred by carbon dioxide emissions. That was in 2002 and for a while these cases were far and in between. But they're not number has exploded since Fridays for Future started. According to a recent report from the law school at Columbia University, New York, there are now more than 2,000 climate change cases under investigation worldwide, with the trend steeply increasing. About 50% of those that have been decided already went in favor of the plaintiff. Suing seems to be particularly popular in the United States. In 2020, 16 young activists ranging in age from 5 to 22 sued the state of Montana. They argued that the state's refusal to consider climate impacts before supporting fossil fuel developments violated their rights to a clean and healthy environment under the Montana state constitution. The judge ruled in their favor and the Montana government is now required to think about carbon emissions before handing out money. Whether that'll make much of a difference remains to be seen. But one can get an idea for what the consequences might be from early earlier lawsuits. For example, in 2013, the non-profit organization Uganda sued the Dutch government over not doing enough to protect its citizens. In 2015, the Dutch Supreme Court agreed with them and ruled that by 2020, the government must cut fossil fuel emissions by 25% compared to 1919. The Dutch government didn't care all that much and would have missed that target had it not been for COVID that just so happened to reduce carbon emissions enough in 2020. A similar story played out in the UK where the parliament imposed very ambitious climate change goals on itself and then didn't live up to it. The environmental charity Client Earth sued. In 2023, the High Court ordered the government to strengthen its net zero strategy, but not much happened. And so the charity returned to court in February 2024. Basically, there isn't all that much one can do in a democratic system to force a government into action. The likely outcome of all that suing is that governments will just ditch their climate goals, as just happened in Scotland. No doubt someone is going to sue over this, but will it make a difference? These have all been examples of one particular type of lawsuit, that in which citizens claim that their government has violated its own legislation. But there are other ways that people have sued over climate change. A very important case was decided just a few weeks ago in the European Union. A group of about 2,000 Swiss women claimed that the Swiss government violated their human rights by not doing enough to combat climate change. The case went to to the European Court of Human Rights and the court decided in favor of the Swiss women. This is a very big decision because if the Swiss government has been found guilty of a human rights violation, then billions of other people could sue their own governments as well. But what does that ruling mean? It means that the Swiss government is now legally required to do more to protect its citizens. 
exactly what, however, the ruling doesn't specify. And Switzerland is such a small country that its carbon footprint basically doesn't make any difference for global warming. So maybe they'll put up signs telling people to not camp on melting glaciers. One other type of lawsuit which I want to mention is that of people suing companies, like this Peruvian farmer who says that climate change threatens his village because a nearby glacier is melting off and he's suing the German utility RWE. I'm not sure why a German company in particular is responsible for ruining a Peruvian glacier, but the case is in the works. The Peruvian wants about 20,000 euro to fix up his farm, so there's not a huge amount of money at stake, but if you multiply that by some hundred million people, soon we'll be talking real money. I'm not a lawyer, but I suspect that all the suing by environmental activists will soon have a backlash in which the other side takes its case to court, arguing in favour of the utility of hogs. I mean fossil fuels. So keep calm and keep dusting your solar panels. You can try to sue the world into action, but a better way to help nature is to take action yourself by supporting my friends from Planet Wild. Planet Wild is a global environmental protection organization that uses membership contributions to restore ecosystems. I've been part of their community since last year, and it's been wonderful to see their community grow. They carry out out a new rewilding mission every month and they document what they do with video reports that you can find right here on YouTube. This way you can't only see for yourself how their projects are making a difference, you also get some amazing nature footage to see. In their newest mission they're transforming the sad and barren no man's land under power lines. By carefully regrowing plants they are turning these almost dead areas into thriving ecosystems and reconnect forest parts that had been rudely divided. Imagine how much we could achieve if this organization grows. Have a look at Planet Wild and consider supporting them. It takes as little as six dollars a month to save a forest here or a species there and if you change your mind later don't worry you can cancel your membership every month. Go check out Planet Wild through the link in the description or by scanning the QR code and consider becoming a supporter. Porter. I'll cover the first month of your subscription if you're among the first 500 people signing up with my code. Or if you want to get to know them better first, check out their latest mission video here. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.